The popular ghost ranch looks like something out of a disaster movie. News 13's Emily Younger is live at the ghost ranch just north of Abiquiu, where people are trying to pick up the pieces from the massive flooding. Emily? Well, Jessica, the ranch took a beating. This is what I'm talking about. This building was actually ripped from its foundation. These massive trees just split in half. It just buffeted us. The rains came very quickly. And so did the flooding. Storms pounded the Ghost Ranch, a retreat center near Abiquiu, where Georgia O'Keeffe once painted, wiping out nearly everything in its path. And all of a sudden, after maybe 20, 30 minutes at most, Suzanne came from the back and she said, we, we have to evacuate now, grab your purses and get out. Emily Caird and her friend Sally were inside one of the ranch's art buildings when the floodwaters rolled through. None of us really hesitated. We all just... I guess there's been enough in the news that we just took off. Moments later, the studio they were just in collapsed. We had one whole building that was just taken off of its foundation and smashed up against the tree. This is what it looks like now, pieces of warped metal. It's something workers here say is devastating to see. We have torrential rains, but we've never in the, the history of the ranch, people have been coming here. This is our 60th anniversary and people have been coming here for 60 years. Uh, they have never seen anything like this before. They had never seen this either. Trees split in half, equipment like these kilns destroyed. Sadness because it was beautiful. The ranch says it will rebuild. But for people like Caird, who have been coming here for years, it may never be the same. And see the shed that we'd used or the building that we used just collapsed. It's just really, really sad. Alfima is now on scene here assessing all of the destruction. War is showing up in increasing numbers. Their sting is incredibly painful and can even be deadly. ABC's Philip Minna is in Brighton Beach, New York with that for us. Good morning, Philip. Robin, good morning. Shark attacks have been in the headlines all summer, but now there's a new threat in the water, a floating terror that can be deadly. In record numbers, they're washing up on eastern shores, stinging unsuspecting swimmers with their venomous tentacles. Felt like a thousand bees stinging me at once. It's called the Portuguese Man of War, and it's something seven-year-old Michael Shantz and his mother won't soon forget. He was just screaming, screaming, a lot of pain. Over the past three weeks, more than 30 of these jellyfish-like creatures reportedly spotted on beaches from Delaware to New York. At least three children reportedly stung off Long Island shores just this week. Close encounters turning painful after many beachgoers mistake them for plastic bags. Nicknamed floating death, they typically float on the surface. Their tentacles can grow up to 30 feet long, and their stingers can pack a punch even more painful than your average jellyfish. In rare cases, causing dangerous allergic reactions and even death. They can really hurt and probably kill a kid. You can put him into anaphylactic shock. Warm ocean currents and strong winds seem to be pushing these tropical water dwellers closer to eastern beaches in record numbers. But experts warn to stay away, even if they're not moving. If they're on the beach, tell the lifeguard, don't touch. They can sting even when they're dead. If you are stung, experts say you the Across parts of Pennsylvania on Thursday, leaving a path of devastation in their wake. This was the scene in Hamburg, where strong wind tore the roof off Blue Mountain Elementary School. That terrified the school's principal, Rachel Wardecki, who was the only one there at the time. She says all of a sudden, there was a hole in the roof. She was on the floor covered in ceiling tile and forced to crawl out over a wall. But amazingly, she managed to escape unharmed. 
Pieces of the roof were seen lodged in 75-foot-tall trees several hundred yards away. Wardecki says they plan to rebuild and classes will resume next month. Spring, Colorado turns to FEMA asking for $20 million to help with flood damage. So our state's new disaster declaration, it covers 11 different counties. 7 News reporter Amanda Zitzman joins us from one of those counties this morning. Amanda, Elbert County suffered washed out roads as well as bridges. That's right, we've been driving along the roads here in Albert County and it is quite a bumpy ride. You can still see some of the cracks in the roadway here. In other parts, officials say they've dealt with roads washed out and a lot of sinkholes. The rain kept coming and it was also cooler, so before anything could dry out, more rain would hit us again. In addition to Elbert, there are 10 other counties that need some serious help here, including Morgan, Washington, Logan, and Yuma. This after the record period rainfall we saw this spring, the National Weather Service actually issued a total of 86 flash flood warnings across the state on 22 different days between April 15th and June 20th. As a result of all the flooding, we're also looking at damage to power and water or wastewater systems and utility systems. So the state says it needs to... That's like the kind of stuff that tornadoes are made of, you know what I mean? When it's moving that fast. Oh yeah, switching. Look at it, look! Look at the water! Holy look at that! Look at that! That's like a freaking oh tornado type We'll be all right. Don't worry. We'll be all right. Look at that. That's freaking nuts. This is a tornado. Stay right there, Barb. You're good. It's gone. It's gone.